Sunday Night Live intro week 12. Yeah, ne? Dozen, a full dozen. A dozen. In, um, yeah, yeah. We've been doing this for three, officially for three months now. Yeah. Well done, boys. Well done. 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 Okay. Medium ray. Medium ray. Medium ray. Medium ray. Medium. Medium ray. Okay. Well, hello and welcome to Sunday Night Live. My name is Obel. And I'm Brent. And tonight you can look forward to a wonderful show. So first off, we're going to kick off. Hold on, just wait quickly. I don't know if you just noticed this, but Obel's got a new shirt. I do. It looks pretty good. Woolies has got 50% off, so yeah. bought myself a new shirt. Right. Why did you choose white though? Like, yeah, it pops. It pops. Maybe it's just to distract people from your face. I think that would be a good... Good yeah. one. Good one. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. What you can expect from tonight is we're going to start off with the Okay, but hold on, let's just quickly, let's just speak about your shirt. Like, let's speak come about on. my shirt. Did you look like, yo, I don't know, if you're like in an Omo ad or something. <laughs> the like guy from skip, the Omo ad. Yo, yeah, a skip ad or something. Are you going to show us how you can clean the shirt afterwards or? Yeah, throw coffee in it. Yeah. Anyways, okay. okay, good one. So what you can expect from the show tonight is we're going to start off with the good question show. Yeah, but, but, but before we get there, can I just ask you this? Are you a televangelist at any stage? I look like life? a televangelist. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it looks like you're going to just like preach to us now. And I wouldn't uh, mind. I wouldn't mind actually being able to speak to the camera okay, right now. Okay, okay, oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry did I did Good I question show. Sorry. And then after that, mm. we're going to come to you with okay, a Okay, but nice you know what you can also be? Just thinking about it, the cult leader is an option. I mean, a cult leader? Yo, you look like one of those guys that like, come to me, my children, you know? You look like you could be that. So, it's a good look for you, Yeah. I really thought it's a nice show. I think let's just go to the good question show. Okay. Give us a countdown. Oh, I've actually got a better one. Just hold on. Is this, is maybe you're a televangelist cult leader, right? That does Omo ads and has a really bad face. It could be an option as well. Maybe you can give us a countdown. Okay, can I do it on your shirt? <laughs> I've got no power on where you do it actually, because you're the editor. <laughs> okay, so yeah. just sit still and then I'll do it on your shirt. Okay, there you go. How does it feel? Does it feel weird? You're angry at me, aren't you? <laughs> I really like this shirt. <laughs> I think it looks nice. <laughs> Is it a sin to... Smoke? Is it a sin to... Get a tattoo? Is it a sin to... Go clubbing? What, what baby seals? <laughs> no, no, night, night clubbing. Oh, okay. Night clubbing okay. baby seals, yeah. Well, grey areas. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Mm, yeah, but good. clubbing seals is definitely a sin. Yeah, definitely clubbing seals has to yeah, be. We're a not going to talk we're about that. Gonna, no brainer. This is the good question show. Just tell me what I wanna know. The good question show. Well, welcome to the good question show, and today we are asking the question: Is it a sin to? That's the question. That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. A I good mean, question. we're asking this question because, you know, I get to work with a lot of young people and there are these lot of gray areas in life, you know. Mm. Is it a sin to smoke? Is it a sin to get a tattoo? Um, is it a sin mm. to download movies illegally? Yeah. You know, go to a nightclub or whatever. Or a nightclub yeah. or wherever mm. it may be. So this is a very intense question yeah. that we need to ask. And, um, yeah. So that's why we're asking today. the question. Is it a sin to do this and that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great to be back again. I think this is a very interesting chat because I think there's a lot of things like that the Bible is ultimately and absolutely clear on. Like you're mm. not allowed to kill, you're not allowed to commit adultery. But then there's a sort of a few topics that the Bible does not absolutely say it's right or wrong. Yeah. Or at least in the everybody. New Testament. Yeah. It, at least in, in yeah. the New Testament. And I think um, even the church's acceptance and rejection of many of these topics have changed over the past mm. few decades. Mm. Um, one example of that is, for instance, smoking, which is a huge gray area. But um, a few decades ago, Charles Spurgeon, who was a f fairly famous um, theologian, mm -hmm. had the following to say about smoking. So he was a smoker himself. I think he oh. enjoyed smoking the pipe. <laughs> and he would say that smoking the pipe would actually prepare his voice for preaching. And when someone challenged him on that, he said this, that I will unashamedly continue 
to smoke to the glory of God. Yeah. Yo, that's Which is great. interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the I'm not saying I think for preaching, I need to start <coughs> just maybe my smoking a pipe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you're right, uh, and that's something that's also sort of changed culturally. 50 years ago, smoking was mm. you know, widely accepted, whereas today, maybe not so much. It's less of a gray area for many Christians, yeah. um, but you can't also necessarily quote scripture yeah. uh, to back that. Um, yeah. And I think just on the smoking part, I've also done some research, um, and I think all the smokers will, uh, they're probably going to use this argument after this, but probably two of the most influential theologians of the 1900s was Karl Barth, he was a, like a Protestant theologian, and then Karl Reiner, he was like the, the main, one of the big thinkers in the Catholic Church, both of them smokers. C.S. Lewis, one of the great thinkers of the 19th century, uh, 20th century, he was a smoker. And get this, this is not only speaking about Christian circles, do you know that the President of America and the, uh, and the Prime Minister of England during the World War, the two heroes, Britain and America, their leaders, both of them smoked. What? You know who did not smoke and had an anti-tobacco campaign during the World War? Germany. Germany. Hitler. So basically, if your boss tells you or your parents tell you you're not allowed to smoke, you can tell them they're Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it comes down yeah. to. So all, the, all these heroes of the 20th century, they smoked and someone like Hitler and these Nazis didn't. Yeah. yeah. But he was also a drug addict, um, Hitler. So, yeah. So it's anyway. like, yeah. 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 Okay, Supposed but that, that's only a joke. Please don't use that <laughs> argument. It's a bad <laughs> argument, um, but it is actually the truth. Yeah. Anyways, let's get back to our topic. So uh, what would we say to people that ask a question on, is it a sin to, maybe someone wants to know whether they can go out and soki or nightclub, clubbing or whatever, not baby seals, but like, you oh, know, like nightclubs. Yeah, yeah. um, and then also, uh, you know, is it okay for me to smoke and uh, all of those things? Uh, what would you say, what would be a good, way to answer that question um, a good place to start maybe would be the motive behind the question so why wow. are you asking that question so i think there's a lot of motives and we've all had that person who comes up to us and go yes um is, is smoking against being a christian um and just by the way i'm asking for a friend um, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah i'm asking for a friend if so but 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 maybe you really are asking for a friend. So obviously yeah. if your motive is that there's maybe someone in your family who's considering getting a tattoo mm. or enjoys clubbing or you yourself is considering getting a tattoo mm. or enjoys clubbing or, or whatever, mm. Um, mm. Uh, maybe one, your motive might be that you genuinely want, you want to learn mm. what scripture is saying about that to, to make an informed decision. So I think yeah. that's definitely one of the motivations, which is obviously a good motivation. But th then I think there are some others which... Yeah. But like the guy that says... Uh, I want to know, but actually you've already made up your mind. Yes. Yeah. So you're going to do it anyways, um, but it would be nice if there's a scripture to, to a back scripture. you. Back you yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So you've made yeah. my decision, but yeah. it would be nice if it's just yes. Yeah. Yes. But then you're actually not really asking the question. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then I think there are some people who um, who ask the question, but almost feels to me they're asking the wrong question, where mm. their perception of Christianity might be, if I can just nail the perfect list of rights and wrongs, then that makes me a good Christian, mm. which then brings me to the point where I think you're asking the wrong question yeah. um, and the reason I would say that is because I don't think there's any life in a Christianity that is just about a, a rule or a, a list of rights and wrongs and I think when you go back I've, I've always found it interesting when in the Garden of Eden the two trees that were there was the tree of life and then the tree of the knowledge of good and evil which is the one that God said do not eat from because he never he never wanted us to partake and and saw relationship with him as a, a list of rules of right yes. what is yeah. right and what is wrong mm -hmm. and and many people who m may approach Christianity in that way would have found that there's no life in that kind of Christianity yeah, but there's the tree of life where I believe that many of the intent maybe from God's side why he left mm. it open to interpretation many of these topics is so that we would go to relationship yeah. and and figure it out form our own convictions in relationship with mm. Jesus um, instead of doing it separately from him and trying to fix that list for yeah, ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that especially young people make is that as soon as they think about the Bible, they think about a list of do's and don'ts. Yeah. And uh, so just give me the answer, you know, is this on the do list or on the, on the you know, don't, don't list? list. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then totally missing the point. And that's the whole thing is that the law was completed in Jesus Christ so that we can have this, this freedom. The Bible says it's for freedom that yes. Christ has set us free. Absolutely. Yeah. But then obviously the Bible also says that, um, you know, 
one shouldn't be uh, Paul. He sort of uses this, um, I think, Romans 6, saying, but, you know, your freedom shouldn't be abused. Like he's saying, you know, don't be mm -hmm. stupid. That's not what I'm trying to say. So, so just for, for that question, you know, is it, is it then okay? Uh, how do we look at it? What, what would be some good questions to ask yourself or some filters to use to decide whether, you know, you're going to say yes or no to something, mm. um, even though it's not a law thing, but we still want to make a good decision. Yeah. And that's where the Bible actually helps us out when it yeah. comes to gray areas. It does. It might not give us ultimate conclusions with regards okay. and absolutes regarding these topics, but it mm. does give us a set of questions to ask or filters to put these things through. And I think probably the greatest filter would be, I think, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 23 says that everything is permissible but not everything is beneficial. Yeah. So in other words, the first filter to put this through is, will this build me up in my relationship with Jesus Christ? There's another scripture, I think, later in that, in that chapter, mm. in verse 32, that says, um, do not cause offense to Jews, Greeks, or to the church of God, which brings me to two additional filters. Mm. Will this cause a fellow believer to stumble, or yeah. will this um, almost taint my testimony and hinder an unbeliever from coming to faith mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ? So maybe to double click on the, the first filter, is this um, building me up? Is this sort of all things being permissible? Is this one of the things that mm -hmm. is actually also beneficial? So if you're considering um, clubbing or dating or getting a tattoo mm. or whatever it might, might be, ask yourself the question, is this going to increase or push you closer into int more intimate relationship with Jesus? Or so, might this at some point mm. in your life become a wedge between you and God? And I think depending yeah. on your answer to that question, the answer to the actual gray area is fairly simple. Yeah. I think that's the main filter one should use. Just ask yourself, do, do I feel you know, that this is bringing me closer or further away from God? Yeah. Yeah. What, what would be an example of that? Because you mentioned the first thing. So, so uh, Paul isn't saying you know, do or don't. He's saying, well, is it building up? Is it yes. beneficial for, for your own relationship with God, for the relationship with other believers and yeah. also non-believers? Yes. Um, what, what would you say is a, maybe an example of that second point? Or? Yeah, I think um, maybe, maybe a second point would be this, is that... Um, you know, asking the question, is it allowing other people around me to stumble as well? You know, okay. is, it, is, it, is it helping other people around me? Am I causing other people to stumble? Yeah. Um, That's what Romans that says, do not, do not cause a stumbling block or yeah. be a stumbling block or hindrance uh, yes. for anyone else, for another believer. For yeah. another believer. And, and I yeah. think that is, that is the place is, is asking that, am I allowing, mm. um, you know, my life to be a life that people can look at and not stumble? Um, because that is what we should be doing as mm. believers. And um, just an example of that was I lived with a guy um, and uh, he, he didn't have like a major drinking problem, but he mm. felt that God said, you know, that he should not drink any alcohol for a certain period of time. Mm. And I lived with him and I mean, we all like a beer at a braai and it's, it's, it's fun. But um, then I said to him, you know what, for the next season, I will stop drinking um, any alcohol with you. Okay. Um, not because we're better or we're trying to be better. Mm. It's because I wanted to respect his decision um, and I didn't want to be a stumbling block for him. Yeah. So again, I had to ask that question. You know, this is a gray area. Um, drinking mm. a glass mm. of wine at supper is perfectly fine. But again, mm. I had to take the gray area and ask the question, is it allowing someone else to stumble? And if you, if you put yourself in his almost shoes, imagine he would have taken the, what, two or three month break from drinking alcohol and you mm. didn't. Yeah. So you stocked up on beers <laughs> and you would <laughs> open yeah. the fridge and you would be constantly tempted, tempted literally yeah. every, yes, day, yeah, yeah. Um, every day which yeah. you're so almost walking the extra mile removed from him a stumbling yes, block yeah. that might have caused yeah. him to fall. Now that's acting in love toward yeah. those around you. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, the third one which you mentioned is to non-believers and uh, I think Paul is uh, um, yeah, such a great example of um, you know, he, he, everything he did, he did so that mm. more people can come to Jesus and mm. it's uh, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 22 where he says, I have become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel. Sure. Um, and even all of the other places where he speaks about, you know, gray areas like, is it okay for you to, um, you know, uh, or to keep a certain day holy or are all days the same? Um, is it okay for you to eat meat that have been sacrificed? Or is it okay to eat meat or should you only eat vegetables? Lots yeah. of that's lots another of question, just quickly. <laughs> I want to ask is that is if if Paul's writing this become all things to all men do you think Paul would have become a vegan for vegans that's a good that's a good question that's well, a green area I'll, that's a green area I'll get back to that but just to, let's quickly go down that rabbit hole okay. do you know what Paul actually did say in a Brent I know you will love the scripture yeah. 
Everyone will love the scripture. Just because what does it say um, about veganism? I think, like, do you yeah. think Paul would have become a Romans vegan? Romans 14 verses 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Paul says the following. As for the one who is weak in faith. So he's speaking about weakness as sort of like you, your faith is not very strong. He says weak in the faith. Welcome him, but do not quarrel over opinions. Verse 2. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Mm. There we have it. So what is he saying, Brent? So he's saying the weak eats vegetables, so let's not... (laughs) The weak person eats vegetables, yeah. yeah. So basically it seems like Paul is sort of saying, let's not judge you know, the vegans and vegetarians, but they're all weak. Um, but they're weak, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, what Paul was busy saying. Disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyways, yeah. but I think it's a good, there is a good point That's there. Good, so like point. Paul actually speaks about meat quite a lot and he says, well, mm. you know, there, there's no law that tells you you're not allowed to. Yeah. Um, but, you know, depending on the culture that you find yourself in and also your culture. Anyways, we're actually sidetracking a lot now. A little, so we, a this bit, topic is not about whether you can or may or may not eat meat. Um, yeah. So let's get back to what let's I was saying, back, which was, but oh, Paul saying he will become all things to all men to win some, mm. which I think is so brilliant. So the question one can ask yourself is this thing that I'm considering, whether it be smoking or getting a tattoo or clubbing mm. or whatever, is it going to help people to come closer to Jesus or not? Mm. Or am I going to be one of those Christians that other people say, well, he says he's a Christian, but look at him. Yeah, um, life, yeah. And this is so, yeah, I think this is um, another, I, I mean, I remember when I was younger, uh, I had this friend that said, because I stopped going to the nightclubs with him after I started following Jesus passionately. And he says, yeah, but who's going to share the gospel to those in the nightclub? And I think that's a good <laughs> point. But the problem was, he was going there and becoming all things to all men so much that he was getting drunk. Yes. And then you, I don't know, you know, pick up a girl there and whatnot. So, you know, then obviously you're just trying to justify yourself. Justify your um, but I think Paul is pretty clear. So, like, I like this idea. I'm willing to let go of anything that I love. Mm. Uh, so that other people can come closer to Jesus because it's not about me. Mm. It's getting yeah, seeing it's other good. people saved. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. What would be some other things? So we said, okay, mm-hmm. building up uh, myself and uh, fellow believers and non-believers. What would be maybe another Yeah, question? I think uh, another one that's really important is, is, is this thing controlling me? Do I have like a bondage towards this thing? Um, because you know, there's just this okay. uh, piece of scripture that's really cool. It says, all things um, are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. It's mm. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. And um, it's such a mm. beautiful piece of scripture. It says that nothing will dominate me. But sure. the question is, this thing that you are actually you know, busy doing, is it busy dominating your life? Is it controlling your life? Yeah. You know, the drinking or the smoking or mm. you know, the clubbing or whatever you, you, mm. you're into. Is it busy controlling your life mm. at the moment? Because that's the challenge is, is if it's controlling me, then I'm no longer the master of it. It's sure. the master over me. Yeah. And, and as soon as mm. it's the master over me, that is, again, in a, when I'm in a very dangerous place. Um, mm. Someone once told me the best way to know if you are, are bound to something or you're struggling with something is just leave it for a few months. Yeah. And see if it irritates you. You know, if, if you're saying, no, 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 I'm not a slave to smoking, then I'm like, cool, then just leave it for three months. Yeah. And if you struggle to leave it, mm. then you know no, you have a problem. Much, yeah. Same thing with some of the guys watching this that's got an Xbox yeah. um, that's jamming till three o'clock in so the morning. So you're not addicted to your Xbox, just not leave it for three months? Yeah, then we'll see. Because yeah, we'll you're not it addicted, is. are you? Yeah, yeah obviously. So <laughs> yeah. it's a very difficult question yeah. to ask because in you, you don't want to do it. And mm. the moment you realize you don't mm. want to do it, it's like, wow, this thing actually has yeah, a hold on a good, place yeah. in my heart that it shouldn't have. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's the, f- so, yeah, the fourth mm. thing that we're going to yeah, ask yeah. is, yeah. is this thing binding? And I think that's pretty That's the whole thing about what Paul's mindset of answering that question, mm. is it a sin too? He's mm. saying, look, nothing is, there's another scripture that says, nothing is clean in itself. Yeah. Uh, that's not actually, you know, you're asking, you're asking the wrong question mm. and he points us to love, love mm. toward those around us that believe in Jesus and even those not. And also we don't want you or God doesn't want you to be enslaved by anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's actually pointing us toward freedom, yes. but a healthy kind of freedom yes. that's Absolutely. free of, of slavery. Yeah. That's and many of these questions require us to be brutally honest with ourselves because you can yeah. deceive yourself. Like, no man, I can do Two, three yeah. months uh, you without can find, my Xbox yeah. or smoking. Sure. Everyone's they can say, well, the do Bible doesn't say anything <laughs> yeah, about it. Exactly. Yeah. Until yeah. the tech eats the talk. Exactly. <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> yeah, lockdown happens. Yeah. Then you're in trouble. Yeah, like oval with golf during lockdown. Yeah, yeah. 
I remember. But I'm not, I'm not enslaved. I haven't, played, I haven't played for five months. So yeah. I'm not enslaved. Uh, a final question that I want to <laughs> <laughs> lay on the table <laughs> that would be a good filter for you to, to uh, place your, your gray areas in mm. is the one of conscience. Now, in Romans 14, verse 23, it's mm. the whole conversation about what is permissible to eat and all of that. And mm. then Paul says, um, if you eat, but you do not, but you are condemned in your eating or mm. you ha- do not have faith um, or apply your mm. faith in the eating, mm. um, then you mm. are condemned by it because anything yeah. done not out of faith is at the end of the day sin. So he's mm. literally saying mm. if, if this action that you are considering is causing you a great deal of guilt or mm. condemnation and does not result in peace. So there's something your conscience inside of you is yep. it doesn't sit well with it. Then I think mm. it's a it's a, an easy answer. Yeah. Mm. And again, you have to be honest with yourself. If you feel yeah. the slightest mm. bit of uncertainty or or guilt when you even think of doing this mm. thing, then that's that's an indication that it's yes, probably yeah. not a good idea for you too. Yeah, it's like that feeling mm. you get when you know, like you know you know mm. you're doing something wrong. You kind of hide your phone or you you you're scared that people know. And yeah. I think that that's the feeling yeah. that you like. You know, if you if you have to hide it, you know, put yeah. it in a, in a brown paper bag so no one can see. <laughs> yes, yeah. um, you know, then you're actually realizing you know, mm. I'm hiding something. Yeah, so yes. The reason I'm hiding something is because there's something wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it yeah. doesn't sit well. With it doesn't me. sit yeah, well yeah. with me. It doesn't yeah. fit. And I want to encourage you. I think one Corinthians ten, uh, as we've spoken, is a real good passage to go and read and then also Romans 14 I think Romans 14 is probably the best passage of scripture that speaks about um, sort of gray areas or you know if you don't have a clear uh, scripture in the Bible that tells you whether something's right or wrong go to Romans 14 um, and and go study that and it's it's so interesting so so I think basically what we're saying is if you are asking is it a sin too you are asking the wrong question. Yeah. Um, and that's what Paul was busy saying is that, look, we've been free. We've been, it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Yeah. But what that freedom looks like, we have been made free so that we can love others. So we're going to do everything we do to love others, mm-hmm. fellow believers, the non-believers. Mm-hmm. And then also he speaks quite clearly anything that is not from faith is sin. Yeah. Um, and so saying you must be living with freedom. Because remember, if you've got a guilty conscience, you're not living in freedom. Absolutely. And so he's basically saying, you know, he wants to, the Bible wants to help us to a place of freedom. Um, and so it's not a, a do's and don'ts. Um, it's actually about freedom in Christ. Um, mm. A free conscience and also, you yeah, know, free to be upbuilding to those around yes. you. Yeah, yeah. that's good. good. So in conclusion, is it a sin too? Smoke. Smoke. Drink. drink Get it at Clubbing. You. Uh, oh, yeah. Download. Videos. Go read the Bible and you decide. Yeah, yeah. that's good. That's okay. good. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Hello, Dr. Deo. My name is Krishane Berger, and today I decided not to give a testimony about what God has done and what God is doing, or but rather what God is going to do. So, as you all know, I'm still single. And I trust that God is going to give me a wife soon. Um, Abel said I should say it. I'm just saying. Okay. Hey, Dr. Deo. My name is Krishane Berger. And I decided instead of giving a testimony about what God has done, I want to share a testimony about what God is currently doing in my life and has been doing since I found Him. And I believe even before that. So it might come as a shock to you, but one of my biggest struggles in life is finding acceptance within who I am. And I always try to find acceptance in other people. Now, I think um, for me in my life, it has been a misunderstanding of who God is as a father. And the thing is, if we don't understand what the father says about us, we are going to go to all the other people to find out who we are, who they say we are. We're going to try and find our worth in things um, like what we do with our hands in relationships, in girls, in in sport, in leadership, in whatever case it may be, we're going to try and find acceptance in that because we don't find our acceptance in Christ. Now, I can truly testify that this has been one of my biggest battles in my life ever since I've been a Christian and even before that. But I can truly testify about the goodness of God. And even though it is an ongoing testimony, it's like climbing a mountain. When I look back, I know that I'm definitely not where I was. And when I look up, I know I'm definitely not where I want to be. But the biggest thing that I think we should remember in this time is not is that God loves you as you are where you are. It does not matter where you've been 
or where you're going, but God loves you in this moment. His love for you is perfect. His love for me is perfect in this moment. And I think that is a driving force that we can use, not looking at where we want to be and seeing we're not there yet because that is going to make you negative and it's going to discourage you. But I want to encourage you today to really go and focus upon that which the Father says over you and to find your acceptance in that. And I want to tell you, if if you struggle with that, it's okay. For me, it's not happening overnight. It's been a lifelong, a few years journey that I'm on and I'm definitely not where I was, but I know that my father loves me and that God is gonna continue revealing himself to you as a father. And it's okay because God has grace for you. As I said, he loves you in the moment as you are for who you are. And let that be the driving force to keep on pressing into God as a father. He will reveal himself for you, to you. Yeah. What was my phone? Hey, countdown. One, two, three. It's not Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay, my easy right here. Okay. Well, thank you so much for that testimony. We really enjoyed that. It's really great hearing how God works in people's lives. And maybe you've got a story that you want to tell, a testimony you want to share. And we're going to invite you to please contact us and we'd love to hear your story. Um, but let's go to our next moment, our generosity moment. Amen, amen. So we are busy in this month with our generosity build up. Yeah. Now, we've got an re a really generous family in Doxadeo. And so we love to be a blessing uh, to our city. And so the generosity fund is when we we actually ask once a year we ask people from our church to contribute toward this fund or even people outside of our church uh, over and above tithes uh, to contribute toward a fund and through this fund we fund various projects and ministries that take place outside of the walls of our church um, that's really to the benefit uh, of our city and uh, yeah so we want to give you feedback each week so in this interview to come we give you a bit of the insights um, and uh, feedback on what's been happening in the El Piso house for babies as well as our pop-up skills development. And yeah. El Piso yeah. kind of sounds like a Mexican house for babies. It does, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So and, we, I, and I hear we, the we, guy doing the interview is extremely handsome. Like I've, I've heard he's a good looking guy. Mm. Um, he he kind of looks just like you, but without the whole televangelist, you know, cult leader, homo salesman, bad face look, um, it kind of looks like you. So, okay. yeah, really look forward to Can we just, just go there? there. Are, you, are you a bit sad now? Let's just go to the interview, okay. wasting, love, wasting people's time here. Christians respond differently in times of crisis. We see crisis from a different lens. We see crisis as an opportunity to love. We are driven by love. The love of Jesus compels us. This love we feel is not a quiet emotion. No, it is a burning passion, an all-consuming energy that is visible in our everyday mission and action. Our city needs the love of Jesus more than ever before. In Doxa Dea Bloemfontein, we want to love our city by reaching the lost, healing the pain, and restoring that which is broken. Generosity 2020, driven by love. So today we are celebrating and taking a look at our El Piso House for Babies and also our pop-up skills development program. And with me, I've got Manel Prinsloer, a good friend of mine, and also the, the leader or the, um, the person taking responsibility for the City Changes project. Um, and so she's going to be telling us a bit more. So Manel, just tell us a bit about what is the El Piso House for Babies. So we know last year we took responsibility for a baby house uh, in our city, but I think many people might be wondering, what is a baby house? So El Piso is a house for babies from newly born up until two years old, um, and it's a security house for babies that's been abandoned or neglected or mistreated. Um, for example, one of our babies was left in a hospital, so then a social worker will connect with us um, and then we will look after them for a time until they can either go back to the houses or go into foster care or be adopted. Um, yeah, and the idea is really just to create a secure and loving home for these babies. Yeah, yeah, 
That's amazing. Um, and so far, uh, I hear also God has been really good to us um, and He's provided. Uh, so tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so when we took over this house, um, we could only accommodate six babies. Um, at the moment, we can actually look after 12 babies. Um, we always have enough food um, and clothing for them. And this was a problem um, yeah, before we actually took over. They didn't have enough resources to look after the babies. And that's why we stepped in. So we have had a lot of favor um, from the Lord and a lot of people just coming with us and partnering with us to volunteer and to love our babies. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah, and we know the, the Bible, especially in James, it says that we as Christians or as the church, we should take responsibility for, uh, well, for the widows and for the orphans. Um, this is really just taking care of orphans. Um, but then the Bible also speaks about uh, taking care of the poor. Um, and I know this is something that you're extremely passionate about, that you want to be a blessing to the poor um, in our city, um, because that's what the Bible, especially in James, calls us to be. Um, and so we've also recently started a project called pop-up or the pop-up skills development program uh, so why don't you just maybe tell our viewers about that so yes as you said pop-up is a skills development program um, and we really try to restore hope to people in our city that either couldn't finish school um, because of a lot of different reasons or just couldn't get a job after school so we try to take a holistic view at this person so we share the gospel and um, we do some work readiness and then only we do a skill so um, last year we actually had barista training and we had four learners um, and three of them actually got a job after this process so we are very excited about what can actually happen with this whole pop-up um, program so the bad thing is that we couldn't launch this year we actually wanted to have our big launch in april due to the lockdown um, but we are very excited about actually maybe starting in september this year or early next year um, yeah and really just blessing the people Wonderful. in our city yeah yeah and i think sometimes we can so easily underestimate the the effect that a new skill and a new job could do because it's it's providing for a whole family uh, for a very long time into the future um, so we trust in god that we'll see many many more people being trained uh, to find a new skill find a job but also to be equipped with life skills and uh, be, to be trained in the gospel yeah very good. Uh, so I would like for us to take a moment and I'd like to uh, invite you to join me um, as we pray uh, for the poor in our city and we pray especially for the pop-up skills development program um, and then also for the Alpizo House for Babies that we would really be a, a safe place um, uh, for these young uh, orphans to help them in a time of crisis. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we, um, we just want to thank you also that we can be part of your mission. Um, and God, we want to ask you that you'd give us the wisdom and give us all the means, God, necessary so that, so that we can be faithful um, in this wonderful, these wonderful projects that you've given us, God, with the Alpizo uh, House for Babies, God, that we would steward that well um, and really be a loving and, and a caring place uh, for those orphans, God. And then uh, in the same way, God, that you'd give us the, the, the wisdom, God, that we'd really be be a blessing to the poor in the city that we'll see many 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 people being trained um, and also help people to find jobs um, we pray that in your name amen we've come to the end of our show and then as usual we've got to me the announcement guy what's up guys what's up to me nice shirt yeah looking good my advice now, Brent, I don't think, I think maybe next week we can talk about is it a sin to chirp your friends? I mean, you can't just chirp to me. I mean, I know he's got a baby blue shirt with pink flamingos on. I mean, okay, as I said that to me, to you buy it in the ladies section. Okay. <laughs> okay, I have one thing for each of you. Friends, when Mac Lamont made the song Thrift Shop, he made it as just the song. You don't actually have to live it. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, well, I see you laughing, but the, the Pope called and he wants his shirt back. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, as a church, we love community groups and our community groups are doing a wholeness course over the next few weeks. It is a great opportunity for you to grow individually and as a community group. And if you're not yet in a community group, please reach out to us, we'd love to connect you. And as a family, we love to reach out for the city. If you, help, if you want to help us reach the city, there are three ways in which you can give. There's Payfast, EFT and Zappa. Remember guys, like, share and subscribe and maybe we'll have some new shirts 
<laughs> and I don't know how to do with that. <laughs> Maybe we can have some new shirts and Brent can get a new jacket. See you guys next week. This has been Timmy, your announcement guy. Cheers!